It's yeah. like languages, you know. Mm-hmm. Once you know, this, no one knows this language anymore. This last person died, so therefore, you know, yep. and their language died. And the same thing with some of these old systems on the computers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess we have to phase phase them out at some point, like uh, punch cards. I remember punch cards and uh, one wait, minute yeah. oh. until showtime. That was quick. Wow. Yeah, it was. Get ready to uh, start the pre-roll here. Stay tuned. Well, hello, uh, Facebook and YouTube. I almost said Yahoo. Why am I thinking Yahoo? They don't have this. Both, both of them came on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're both on. Uh, you didn't didn't have a delay on Facebook, huh? Uh, no. Nope. Well, there was, but you know, when I at two o'clock, I saw YouTube came on right away, and then all of a sudden, Facebook. Um, I don't know about twenty seconds. Took later. A sh- yeah. Sweet old time. Mm-hmm. Facebook yeah. always, you know. Well, they have to censor. But you guys are here. Welcome, Facebook. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What's that beeping noise? Is that on your end? Uh, yeah. yeah. It, let me. It sounds like a tie. <laughs> it's it's my phone. Let me oh. turn it off. <laughs> your phone's making. Noise. No, your show I, will go live in five seconds. Wait a minute. Four, We're still talking. Three. Oh my God. Two. One. Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. This is all about wine, the talk show dedicated to the wine industry since 2009. Featuring winemaker, cellar master, vineyardist, and tasting expert, Ron. 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 Basically, what we're trying to do on this program is just trying to educate people and trying to make wine less confusing and more friendly. From coast to coast and around the world. You know, we really have had some some neat people on the program. I I just, I love that. Post your questions and comments during the live show on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash all about wine. BTR. Again, that's www.facebook.com forward slash all about wine BTR. And now, all about wine is on. Here's Rod. Yes, he is. Yay. All right, settle down, folks. Settle down. You back in the house. Sit down. Yeah, really. Sit down, everybody. Yeah, it's it's getting a little bit cooler out there and so they're really happy and yeah. froggy so yeah we're bracing up i've got yeah. the uh the coats and uh gloves ready to go uh i think we're going to be in the 70s yeah yeah weekend. me too oh it's fantastic yeah i uh digging out the digging out the woolly woolly socks too i mean oh, you know, yeah so it's always handy yeah what, oh i forgot to turn on but the uh chat here there we go all right. This weekend is supposed to be the, I think, Saturday mm-hmm. or uh, Sunday. Uh, the front's supposed to go through and drop us down to. Yep. The mornings here, they're saying we could get mornings here into not here, here, just just <laughs> north of us into the upper fifties. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Yeah. I know. Yeah. I hope they have. Uh, so uh, firewood and all that good stuff to to burn in the fireplaces. Yeah, you know, get everything get everything stacked stacked up for the mm-hmm. for the cold snap. Absolutely. But then by Tuesday, it's supposed to be up to 90 again. So. Oh, God, again? God. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm ready for really. the cool but, temperature. Um, do you, you golf uh, in the cool well, temperature, little... don't you? You go, you go golfing in the Yeah, cool well. Do you have a preference? Yeah, I mean, you know. Some people golf in the snow up north. I I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Number one, you couldn't find your ball, but it, it's just too cold. You bundle up and everything. You can't swing right and all that. But yeah, I've hmm. I've golfed when it's been uh, you know in, in the fifties and uh, wow. It, yeah, it's I think it's just a little bit too cold. I I don't like it. It's not as enjoyable. I, I'd rather be. I'd rather be warm than I would cold, and when especially when it's out there playing golf. So, wow. and I'm sure there's other people out there who disagree with me vehemently, yeah. but still, yeah. though, I'd rather hmm. rather have it a little bit warmer than cold. Yeah. That's a- and so, well, but uh, yeah, it's supposed to it's supposed to get our first winter cold fronts moving through this. Sunday morning, I think our Sunday night was supposed to be cooler and all that. So that's something for us to look forward to. Yeah, 
And the days are getting shorter. They just said on TV that the uh, sun sets at 7.01 tonight, or it's set at 7.01 since it is now 7.03. And uh, sun sets at 7.01 tonight. That's the last time it sets after 7 o'clock until March, March the 25th. Wow. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they just they have a thing on TV, the, the weather girls were talking about it and number of hours of daylight is going to be dropping down until the winter solstice which is only like two months away but then they start getting a little bit longer each each day so. hmm. but uh, okay. uh we were uh what were we talking oh we we're talking about you know new windows windows 11 <laughs> uh <laughs> And Mike's hooking, hooking up to Windows 11 as soon as he gets a chance. And uh, I don't know. If they offered, I might attempt it. But I'll let you do it first, and you'll see how. Well, check what your, you think of it. Check and, your system first, because it's it's very particular. And I didn't realize it was. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a utility. Uh, check my, uh, I don't know. It's on Microsoft's uh, website. Can we say Microsoft? It's not like NFL, right? Okay, good. Um no, it's not. No, no, it's not like saying Super Bowl. Anything. We can't say Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to oh, oh my God! Did I? Where is the beep on that? I have to go back in and delete that. now. Yes. There we go. Oh, that was the wrong beep. <laughs> um, sound like a torque. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know that. It, it, <clears throat> Yeah. They're uh, not compatible with everything, huh? Yes, it's going to be very, uh, very fun. Um, but you know, it. it uh, oh. hmm. There are some requirements, but uh, check it out. There's a utility on the Microsoft site uh, that will check the hardware. And uh, actually, I think if you go in into your settings and Windows Update, and there's a little blurb about Windows 11, um, then it should uh, there should be a link there. But uh, or you can uh, look on oh, okay. say, download it and it'll say, eh, I don't think so. Or it'll say, hey, good day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, congratulations. Yeah. You have now <laughs> downloaded Windows 11. That's right. <laughs> or when, or, you know, or it could to. say, yeah. you know, yeah. attempting to download and it ties up your computer for 24 hours and it says, right. oh, sorry, you're not compatible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <that's terrible. laughs> yeah. When I wake up, no, in the, when I wake up in the that. morning, it'll be all there. No, it won't. Um, no, it's still, still a little, you know, waiting, loading, you know, keep mm-hmm. on saying loading. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, we were talking about that. Earlier. Welcome to All About Wine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, got, got some odds and ends to talk about tonight and just, just some things that uh, we've had a couple of guests last two weeks. And, and both of them are very enjoyable. I, I mm-hmm. learned a lot from the guests and so it was it's been some fun guests and we got one i think coming up in three weeks the fourth of november oh no i'm looking at the wrong map here the wrong calendar here october oh there you go okay i was looking at that uh, September, and I'm saying nothing's right here. I'm, you know, mm. that's why nothing was right because that's that's the wrong month. Um, you know, o- October is this month. So then, in three weeks, we have a guest, mm. and so uh, we'll find out more about that when he comes on. Mm. Uh, or as we get closer, <laughs> hopefully before. The- but. <laughs> Uh-huh. Hopefully before then. <laughs> when he comes Yeah, on. Uh, before he comes on. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, sir. What do you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would you like to be a guest on the show? <laughs> and why are you here with us? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll know before then. You're right. Um <laughs> well, I was reading while I was talking. Oh. <laughs> I, I, no, so that was it. I was looking at stuff here, looking at all the stuff that's that's going on this month and and everything else. Uh, this is Virginia Wine Month, Texas Wine Month, and Pennsylvania Wine Month, October. 
and uh, let's see, today is the 14th, so it is uh, Prokopak Day, which Prokopak is the name of a grape, and I don't know here. Let me see if if this if I can find my grape description. Wine grape varieties. There we go. And then let's look for Prokopak and see what that has to say about it. Uh, PR Prokopak. There we go. All right. Prokopak is grown mainly in Serbia. 85% of the grape is, uh, of the plantings is in Serbia, with the other 15% in the Macedonian Republic. So it's not like it's all over the place. Uh, Prokopak is a red wine grape variety indigenous to the former, Yugos- to the former Yugoslavia. Today, the variety is found in large quantities in the f- former Yugoslavian states of Serbia, Kosovo, uh, Kosovo and North uh, Macedonia, although it remains largely unknown outside of these countries, which is true because I've never heard of it. It's well suited to the terror uh, of its cold climate homeland, and it can withstand temperatures to uh, a uh, minus 18 Celsius or uh, 40 Degree, minus four degrees Celsius uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, it has resistance to botrytis and commonly used to produce rosé wines and in blends. So there you go. Today is the actual Prokopak. Uh, Prokopak. P R O K U P A C Prokopak Day. And it goes great with Serbian style crumbed. Pork, lentil dal, or braised rabbit with carrots. I think that's cooked rabbit. It's not just having a rabbit in the yard with a carrot. And uh, let's see. The prices, the most expensive is $20. The cheapest, a couple of them here at $8 or so. So, Brokeback. You probably will never see one unless you're traveling to Serbia. And then you'll find them there. And if you've ever had one. You know, send me an email. Let me know what it's like. I've never heard of the grape. But today is Prokopak Day. And let's see what else we got coming on. National Red Wine Day is tomorrow, the 15th. And then the third Friday in October, which is tomorrow, uh, is National Champagne Day. Or the 23rd, or the 16th. You know, and I say that because when I was doing research trying to find all these holidays, wine-associated holidays, they had three different dates for National Champagne Day. So it could be any of those. Starting on Sunday is Drink Local Wine Week. So that's always a good thing. Get your local wineries and drink local winery starts on uh, Sunday, the, what's that, 17th? Uh, 14, 15, 16, uh, yeah. Today's 14, 15, 17th, yeah. 17th will be the start of Drink Local Wine Week. So uh, there you go. I'm, I've been faltering on telling you what's coming up on, on these wine holidays, but now you're called a Prokopak Day. Prokopak. Mm. There's actually a day for the Prokopak grape. I, that's amazing, since it's only known in that one area, and they actually have a day designated for that. I find that rather odd. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, I received a postcard in the mail uh, because of the winery, and it's a, actually addressed to the winery. I get still get a few things fluttering in here. But this was interesting. This is, uh, the postcard says, are you dog friendly? And we were, actually, we, and the winery was dog friendly. And this is, said, cork hounds, C 
C-O-R-K-H-O-U-N-D-S, Cork Hounds. Cork Hounds is a nationwide search engine that helps dog owners find dog-friendly vineyards, wineries, meaderies, and breweries. We can help you reach more dog owners who want to visit your business with their dogs. But Cork Hounds, and the reason I'm telling you this, I know you all don't have wineries or vineyards or meaderies or breweries, but you may have a dog. And if you do have a dog, check out Cork Hounds, uh, the Facebook page, uh, Cork Hounds, or the uh, CorkHounds.com. Any of those would work. And you can get a hold of uh, Cork Hounds and see uh, what they're all about. And if you've got a dog you want to take some places, you'll find out who is dog-friendly and who isn't dog-friendly. So, and if you are a winery or a vineyard or a meadery or a brewery, you can go to corecounts.com slash register and put your information on there. You can tell if your dog for any outdoors on the porch or patio inside the tasting room. And uh, you can also note any exceptions that you might have. Um, and uh, just give all of your business information, contact information, hours of operation, and Cork Hound will add it to their list. So if you visit a local winery or vineyard or meadery or brewery, and they are dog friendly, then let them know about Cork Hounds so that they can get their name on the list. So I just... I didn't know about that. I wish I had known about it when we had the winery because we were friendly, dog friendly, and uh, we used to have events there and all sorts of stuff and have dogs come in. We'd have our animals. We we were pet friendly, and so it would have been nice to have something like that. Gallo is uncorking a new luxury wine collection. And this this came out uh, in, ooh, let's see, wow, almost uh, three weeks ago. But E&J Gallant Winery's Luxury Wine Group, uh, in collaboration with uh, winemaker Randall Graham, released a collection of wines called The Language of Yes. You heard me. The language of yes. The wines are inspired by the history of the winemaking in the south of France, but it is has a clearly California point of view, made exclusively from California grapes grown in the Central Coast AVA, which is Paso Ropos. I believe it would be Monterey, Paso Ropos, and up and down that area there. That I believe that would be classified as the Central Coast AVA. And they're uh, uh, making it in a Roan variety style. So it's a little bit different approach. The language of yes blends Randall's, who's the winemaker, Randall's winemaking, or wine growing and creative acumen with Gallo's distinguished Central Coast vineyards and grape growers. So they are gearing up big time for it. Graham and Gallo will release three wines this year. The first was introduced in August, and it's a pink wine made from Tiburon and Sinsole. In October, Grenache and a Syrah from the Rancho Rio, are also known as the Murmur Vineyard, will be released. And the initial offering is limited and is available online through the Language of Yes mailing list at languageofyeswine.com. So if you want to become part of it, languageofyeswine.com, and that's get on their mailing list and you can purchase it. The pink wine sells for $30, and the Grenache and Syrah will each sell for $40. Uh, it's, again, Gallo, but premium wines. Luxury, they're not calling them premium. They're calling them luxury wines. 
Uh, the wine is for people who want to go deeper, they are saying. Uh, it is, a uh, company has also begun building a new state-of-the-art production facility and distribution center in Chester County to support future wine business. And so Gallo's really putting some money into it. It's a $423 million investment. It will end up creating 496 new jobs over the next eight years. And so, uh, and this isn't in California. It, this Chester County, I think, where is it? Um, yes, here we are in South Carolina. Uh, it's sort of start meeting East Coast customers, they're saying. And so uh, the uh, overall carbon footprint will be very low. It's going to be a very green facility, and they're going to do what they can to try to keep it that way. First phase of the project is scheduled to be completed in October 2022, which is a year from now. So they're already on top of it, as far as I know. But the language of yeswine.com is the uh, mailing list, and that's only way you can order these wines is through that. Okay, now I let me find it here. Uh, uh, let me get out of that. Uh, oh, here we go. We don't want this one. We want. Uh, oh, I lost the page on one. Where is it? Here, I think this is it. Yes, it is. Okay, got some wineries to tell you about. And stuff that's happening on some wineries coming up here. Whispering Oaks is giving a concert, I think, today. Is it today? Yeah, you missed it. Sorry. Two big spectacular concert events this month. One of them is today. And it started at 6 o'clock, so we all missed it. Next one's October the 30th, and that's at 6 o'clock. Crystal Sh- Shawanda is the musician. She's a Canadian Grammy winner, the Juno Award, Canadian Grammy winner, and multi- multi-award winning blues artist. So she will be at the... Uh, um, Whispering Oaks Winery coming up on October the 30th, 6 o'clock, doesn't it say. Oh, it's going to have an opening uh, by Blue Board, Billboard Blues charting artist Alex Lopez and his band The Express. So I don't know, it doesn't say a price here, so I don't know how much it costs, but you can get a hold of the winery. 352. Seven four eight zero four four nine, and they're located west of Ocala here in Florida. So if you happen to be down here or you're coming down or something, that's uh, a great concert coming up. They also have live music almost all the time too. It's just amazing. They they got people in there constantly. Coming up on uh, tomorrow. They have Nicole Equimy Saturday. Well, tomorrow is from six to nine. Saturday from one to four. John Carter Saturday from six to nine. Del Stumbo and Sunday from one to four. Richie Q. So a bunch of artists coming in there. And then Friday and Saturday evening from five to eight, they have their steak night. And I've told you about that before. Your choices with ribeye beef filet, surf and turf, chicken or fresh fish, baked potato, salad, soup, veggie, and baked beans, and freshly baked bread. $32 a person. Again, get a hold of the winery. It's the phone number I just gave you. Or you can go to www.winesofflorida.com. And that's that's Whispering Oaks, uh, Oxford. Florida is actually their address. I keep saying west of Gainesville, which is really where they are, but Oxford is the the address of the winery there. Tassel Ridge, one of our old friends up in Iowa. Tassel Ridge 
uh, has uh, wine tasting by reservations only, but uh, beginning October 1st, they are, are seated wine tastings by reservation. So first of the month, I, like I said, I haven't read you this stuff in a while. First of the month, they started this. Uh, seated tastings include your choice of one of five tasting flights, freshly baked bread, Frisian Farms Young Gouda, and Tassel Ridge Dipping Oil. Oh, my gosh, what a $15, which you go to California and you're going to taste probably three or four wines, and it's going to cost you $15. And you don't get anything with it. This one, you're getting some fresh baked bread and uh, Gouda cheese and dipping oils and uh, five different wines. What a deal. So if you are up in that area, this is southeast of uh, Des Moines, Iowa. It is, uh, there's a racetrack up there. I can't think of the name of it. It's southeast of Pella, Iowa. And uh, there's, there's some way, racetrack, I can't think of the name of the racetrack, right around Tassel Ridge in that area. Uh, Oskaloosa is not too far from there. So if you're familiar with any of those towns in Iowa, Tassel Ridge is between Pella and Oskaloosa. Open Monday through Friday, 9-6, Saturday, 10-6, Sunday, 12-6. Uh, Lighton is their actual address. And you can get a hold of them at tasselridge.com, T-A-S-S-E-L, ridge.com, or go to info at tasselridge.com. But uh, they uh doing more and more tasting. What's that? No, I thought you were saying something to me, Mike. Oh, no. Uh, no. No. I, oh, okay. I'm, I'm looking up. I uh, guess there's just some noises. I'm looking up uh, raceways, though. Uh, I know. I think I know what you're talking about. It's the Greater Des Moines Soapbox Derby Track. Yeah, that's uh, no. Okay. Is that it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No. Soapbox, <laughs> soapbox Derby. Uh, I didn't think of it. Uh, Eddieville. Look, look in Eddieville. I think the racetrack is in Eddieville. Eddieville. Uh, Eddieville, Iowa. Really? Yeah. Uh, Okay. Is it? Uh, well, they have Eddieville Raceway Park. Um, That's it. Yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Still, they have that. they have races there. Drag racing, you know, funny car. all through the summer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, so it's not the soapbox yeah. one. Okay. Not the soapbox derby. Okay. No. No. Not the soapbox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think the national soapbox is over in um, Indianapolis every year. So. Wow. That's okay. where the national soapboxes. I, I know because my father took the whole family for a vacation one year over to see it. And he had an old army buddy, and yeah. we stayed there and went and saw the soapbox. So, championships. Wow. So, okay. Which was sort of cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, there you go. Tassel Ridge. I think Tassel Ridge has got something else here that's coming up, too. Let me see. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, food and wine. Uh, let's see. Food and wine, the best thing you know. I hope that's not it. Uh, oh, I guess that was the only Tassel Ridge that, that was there. Oh, here's another Tassel Ridge. I knew there was another Tassel Ridge. Uh, wine and wood. Uh, wine and wood. Wine and wood fired oven pizza night. It's tonight. Oh, no, it's tomorrow night. Uh, the 15th, October 15th, which is tomorrow night. Today's, I keep on thinking today's the 15th. Friday night, Tassel Ridge has their pizza served from 5 to 8.30. Wood-fired oven pizza. That, you know, I, I'm going to have to go up there again and visit them and have myself a wood-fired oven pizza. Uh, all sorts of different types of pieces you can get and everything. You can get yourself salads and all sorts of good stuff. And, of course, enjoy their wines. So tomorrow night they're having their wood-fired oven pizza night for the first time in, I think, a couple of years because of COVID. So if you are in Iowa, uh, join them tomorrow. Uh, Barrelhead Farms. 
uh, Wilcox Wine Festival is this weekend. If you are in Arizona, southern Arizona, actually, I don't think they're holding this in the north. I think this is just in the south. Yeah. Wilcox Wine Festival is this weekend. Saturday from 11 to 5. Sunday from 11 to 5. The Saturday Festival, $35 per person, pre-sale, 40 at the gate. Each ticket includes a commemorative wine glass and 10 tasting tickets. Sunday, 11 to 5, 30 per person, and 35 at the gate. So you save yourself $5 if you go Thursday or Sunday instead of Saturday. And that also includes a commemorative wine glass and 10 tasting tickets. Featuring 16 of Arizona's best wineries with over 30 non-winery vendors, including fine arts, artesian foods, vintage vendors, non-stop entertainment, along with two food trucks. So there's plenty to do. The wineries, Aridus Wine Company, Birds and Barrels Vineyards, Bodega Pierce, Carlson Creek Vineyards, Coronado Vineyards, Golden Rule Vineyards, Keeley Schaefer Vineyards, Killsbury Wine Company, 1764 Vineyards, Barrelhead Farms Winery, Copper Horse Vineyard, Strive Vineyard, Page Spring Cellars, and Arizona Stronghold. So there's uh, the whole stack of wine. I think these are all from southern, in fact, I'm almost positive these are all from southern Arizona. You can get tickets at HTTPS, semicolon, backslash, backslash, Wilcox, underline, fall, underline, festival, underline, 2021, dot, Eventbrite, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E, dot com. So that's quite a, but that'll save you five bucks if you go to it and do it. So uh, that's coming up this weekend, the Wilcox Wine Fest. I first told you about that a couple months ago, I think, that we're, they were getting ready for that. And let's see, do we have any other wineries here on this? I thought I had one more. And no, that was a, a double tassel ridge, so that wasn't that. And oh, okay. So uh, check out your local wineries. If you can't make it to any of these I'm promoting here, uh, check out your local wineries. Try to make it to them. Support them. They can use your support. It's getting tough to get back on your feet out there now. And I mean, wow, really uh, still tough to try to do anything. And so get out there and support your local wineries and local breweries and local meaderies and all that as much as you can. Okay, a few things to tell you about here tonight. And well, I've already told you about it. I've got some more things to tell you about. Uh, let's see. This is interesting. I won't go through all this in depth here, but this is an uh, article about the quality of wine hinges on the caliber of its raw materials. You know that. you got to have yourself great quality grapes, and from that you start making a great wine, but... Another thing that is very important is wine barrels. If they're going to age these things in oak, then you want something that is from a good tree. Low-quality barrels make bad wood, hence makes bad wine from inferior trees. So the best trees... The act, of, the act of selecting good trees to make your barrels is an art in itself. you got to know how the trees are going to turn out when you start making barrels. 
And there are people out there who are very good. A lot of these cooperages have people that go out and select their their trees, the forest that they're going to use and stuff like that. Or they have planters and they have a rotation of using the trees and picking them and or, uh, harvesting them when the time has come. Uh, a lot of factors, the diameter of the tree, the seasonality, uh, weather, uh, all these things impact the tree and the growth rings. And that growth rings are the grain. And you want tighter grain, which allows more oxygen to enter, which can increase the wine's uh, nuanced properties, if you will. Uh, the element that can help dictate which varietal ends up in the barrel is by, you know, certain trees. If a tree with a looser grain is used a lot of times to make xenodols, whereas a tree with a tighter grain is used to make high-end cabs or chardonnays. So, the wood makes a big difference. It is it's important to pick the correct tree and the right tree to do the job right. Uh, Quercus, uh, uh, Quercus, Q U E R C U S, Quercus alba, or white oak, uh, is all over the America. It dominates the American landscape. And particularly you find that in the Midwestern, Midwest adjacent states like Missouri, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky. Then you have Quercus uh, petria, which is Irish oak, or Quercus rober, R-O-B-U-R, which is English oak. And these are found primarily in France. Now, Missouri and Kentucky oak is really, really becoming popular and well used now. And it does make a difference. Uh, France's two main species typically give you a tighter grain, which can then influence the juices, flavors, and textures. And the differential, uh, the differential between the trees is uh, noticed in the final product, in the wine itself. And you can tell the difference. Uh, it was amazing. I've had opportunities to try wines that were the same grape that was aged in three different oak barrels. And I was astonished at how much difference oak can make. Uh, I, one of the oaks was from France. One of them was from Missouri. And one was from Minnesota. And it was astonishing, the difference. And the same winemaker, so it wasn't yeah, due to different winemakers. But they really, uh, it's surprising uh, how the oak can cause that much of a difference in the final taste of the wine. You don't notice it just opening up one and drinking it, but oh boy. Uh, Cooperages, that is where barrels are made. Uh, are really the backbone of trying to pick the right trees. And like I say, some areas uh, do a, a replanting, or a constant planting the trees over and over again and have a, a cycle, not, not unlike cork trees. And they try to get them to a certain age before they pick them. Or pick, I keep saying pick, harvest uh, is really the better word. But they, uh, you have to be careful and get them at the right age and get them so you you know the history, the lineage of what's happening with that tree, uh, the weather and all that other stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. On average, American oak trees used to make wine barrels are well over 100 years old. And the minimum tree for barrel usage in France is 150. But, again, they replant, and it's been an ongoing thing, especially some of these cooperages that have been around for, for years. When they're chopped down, they can supply just enough wood for two to three barrels. With the residual wood used for other purposes like furniture or wood vineyards, vineyards 
And this commands reverence for winemakers and their teams whenever they make the trek to see trees up close. Uh, they said it's rather humbling to see these trees that's been around for over 100 years, and especially in France, over 170 years, and know that uh, you're going to be, you know, using the barrels. It says some of the trees in France still have bullets and shrapnel in it from World War One, and uh, they said that it's rather humbling to see that in the trees. So uh, it's quite a uh, an art to pick the right trees, and the art continues all the way to uh, the wine. Once you learn the method behind making a barrel and how it starts from picking the right tree and how one size does not fit all, uh, they develop a new level. People develop a new level of appreciation of what the winery and the coopers can do, and uh, that's uh, it's very true. Uh, it's uh, it's amazing things that go into this that you don't realize. Okay, what is this one here? Paper bottles. We talked about paper bottles at one time. Paperboy was the one we talked about, and we, you know. Uh, I was rather excited about the possibility at the time, and all of a sudden it, it just it stopped. Paperboy, I can't remember the reason either. I mean, we talked about it on the show why Paperboy was not being made anymore. Do, I, do you remember, Mike? Do you remember what the what the reason was? I mm. I, I can't. I don't. I can uh, uh, see if it was... Uh... Remember us talking about it and mm -hmm. saying that there was a reason that they're not going to make them anymore. But, uh, no. Oh, well. It's not that important. You don't you just spend time to look it up. But oh. <laughs> at the end of 2020, a survey of 1,741 wine drinkers across the United Kingdom found that almost two-thirds were willing to buy wine and paper frugal bottles and that's what they call a frugal bottle uh, the bottles or the packaging weighs just 83 grams which is five times less than a glass bottle and has a carbon footprint of up to six times lower and is also made without chemicals from recycled cardboard and can be taken apart entirely for recycling I think paperboy was the same way they could be completely recycled, although I think Paperboy had a liner on the inside of it, if I remember correctly, and I don't think these do. This is, it took five years of research and development to get to this stage. Uh, Malcolm Way, CEO of Frugal Pack, and that's what it's called, the Frugal Pack. Uh, it's the company behind the innovation of the paper bottles now, began the journey to find the right solution. And then he started with pulp paper. He said they found the energy to produce the bottle too high. The coatings or liquid barriers not easily recyclable and the decoration of the package restricted along the, with the cost to manufacture a large format package. So, Frugal Bottle has been in the launch and marketing phase for two years. Its benefits have convinced Sherry uh, Park, who's the owner of Catentina Gosia in Umbria. We have uh, we had made a lot of progress in the vineyard to reduce our carbon footprint, but the packaging was still the weak link. She said, "The Italian winery, which was involved in the prototype phase, launched its first frugal bottles in June of 2020." She says, Northern European countries are particularly receptive to the bottles, and are, as are Japan and Canada. Economies with very specific targets for packaging and recycling. So, you know, sad to say they didn't mention the United States. So the only concern which has so far proved to be bottled is the bottle filling process. The bottles cannot tolerate liquid on the outside. So... Other than that, uh, they cleaned them, sterile, uh, sterile air wash before filling them, and then they use a nitrogen blanket 
for the whites and rosés before putting the cap on. And uh, they said there's no significant difference between bottling with the paper bottles or the frugal bottles or bottling with glass. It's everything's about the same. They said they treat it like bag in a box. Uh, like bag and boxes type approach because it's basically the same. But it's being launched, it's being used out in the European Union now, and Canada and Japan have received some. We haven't seen any here in the States. If you are, there's something else I'm passing on to you. If you happen to see a frugal bottle, then let me know. Or take a picture of it and uh, send it to the All About Wine page. Because uh, I'd really be curious. I guess it has to be screw cap. And I wonder if it's lined. I don't know. All those questions come up. So that's it. Frugal bottle. It's out there. It's going and it's being used. Uh, for wine ingredient labeling. Here's something that the United States has talked about. It says here uh, that the United States has been battling this for a long time, and they have. I, I just some people say we got to have full disclosure wine labels on the the wines, and people like myself say that's ridiculous. You know how many minute ingredients are in a bottle of wine. And other people say, but we need full disclosure to know what it, what we're drinking. And other people, like myself, say, well, then if you have to know everything that's in there and if it gives you problems or anything, don't drink it. You know, I mean, it's still going to give you problems whether you know what everything in there is or not. And so uh, uh, that was me slapping my hands. There was a little bug in here. Uh, so... The project is called U Label, and uh, it is it is, uses QR codes on wine and spirit bottles. So you scan the code, and you'll be taken to a website that lists ingredients and nutrition information for the product. Okay, something like that might work. We do have QR codes already on a lot of bottles because it takes you to the website. The U-Label effort, uh, which started in September, features 16 wine and spirit companies. Companies now, not labels. But it could be the beginning of a wide-ranging requirement that the EU is considering over the next several years. Uh, there's uh, big-name champagne houses, G.H. Mum and Tanager, uh, that is part of it, that's labeling, takes you to a website. Uh, this is a thing that, well, oh, okay, I won't editorialize it. Currently, there are no plans to require you label on wine exported to the U.S. All right. Producers who want to include the label on wine sent to the U.S. can, he says, and the U.S. consumers who bring back a wine back from Europe will also have access to the QR code website. And there will be no geo-blocking, they say, so the United States can't get the information. So it will be available if you have the QR code. I would like to see what they list. I would like to see a full disclosure. First thing, I, I'd just like to see what how they list everything because I have actually seen a full list of everything that's out there. And it's a lot. Uh, there's an unbelievable amount. So, U.S. wine drinkers would finally get to find out how much sulfite is in the wine they drink. From France, Spain, and Germany. Yes, people, France, Spain, and Germany do use sulfite. You know, I used to get people coming into the wine all the time and then going, 
well, I can drink all the wine I want from France or Germany or wherever, and I don't get headaches. But whenever I drink United States wine, I get headaches. And everybody's telling me that because the United States uses so much sulfites. That's why I get the headaches. And I go, no, 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 no. They have sulfites in those wines, too. And they particularly have to to be able to ship it across the ocean to stores and stuff like that because it preserves it. Sulfites don't hurt you. If I haven't lamented about the the misconception of sulfites recently, I guess it's time. Sulfites will not hurt you. Just about everything, just about everything you eat has some form of sulfites. It's used as a preservative for a bunch of stuff. Uh, well, I saw was it, uh, dried fruit, okay? Uh, a lot of people like to eat dried fruit. Dried fruit contains something like 50 times more sulfites than a glass of wine does. And people say, well, I get headaches from, from wine. And I said, you get headaches from dried fruit? No, I, I, I never have. Well, then it's not the sulfites. It's probably because you're drinking too much wine and it's called alcohol. You know, think about that. So, but uh, uh, you can see how much sulfites is in these wines. It's, it's going to be available, and you can see how much with this QR code. Um, and you can also see if it contains anything more than grapes and yeast. Well, these are things people add. I, this, this, and this is what the thing is. Whenever you have full disclosure of what's in a wine, you have to look at everything everything in that wine. And this is why I've always objected to it, because as you're fermenting, all sorts of little minute things come up that can be detected. If you're just going to say, these are the things that were added to the wine, then you're basically setting at grapes, yeast, and maybe some sulfites, and that's it. So why do you need a label? I, I you know, I'm, I'm, you understand where I'm at. The U label will also include calorie and other nutritional information. And also responsible drinking guidelines, a health warning, and details on sustainability. The cost to participate in this is going to be $290. And that's not per bottle. That is per winery, basically, which is going to make it affordable for just about everybody. And so even small wineries will be able to do the $290 a year to get into this. Yeah, and here it says ingredients may include elements like ascorbic acid, oak chips, sulfur dioxide, and yeast nutrients. Um Uh, it, you know, and, and they said that it doesn't look like they're going to have uh, things that will not make the final wine will not be listed. And there are things that will not be in the final wine that are used, too. So uh, that's going to not fill up people's needs to know how much uh, what's in the wine. But... Uh, United States policy that uh, given that winery trade groups have basically halted and stopped there for almost 15 years, they've objected to the cost and the space it would take and that it would confuse customers and that there's also a sense that some large producers uh, who had grape juice concentrator to darken or sweeten their wines would be reluctant to let consumers know there is more than grapes and yeast in their daily wine. And so this has always been an ongoing thing here in the United States. Um, it's uh, federal law allows for voluntarily uh, voluntary labeling, but only in just a few people do. It's not really something that's mainstream out there. Some wine labels uh, do show calorie and nutrition claims uh, are uh, required to use nutrition labels, which is uh, a little bit different. Now, you've got some wineries that 
do agree. They think you should do this. And one of them is, uh, what is it, Ridge Winery. Uh, they have the back of their bottles labeled with uh, all sorts of different things. And I don't think they have a QR code. It doesn't say here. I'm looking at a site at Ridge that's talking about this stuff. But, uh, uh, yeah, they do. They, they list just about everything, um, which, yeah, if, if people want to go into all that stuff, they can. Here, let me go through this on Ridge. These are things that could be added to the wine. It says, what are the main ingredients? The following are the main ingredients. Grapes, calcium carbonate, sulfur, di uh, sulfur dioxide, water, and yeast. That's that's your wine. But they also said TTB, the uh, Trade and Tobacco Bureau, approves wine additives. And it says that TTB in the U.S. and the government Authorities in all major wine-producing countries have approved over 60 additives for use in wine. You can see the TTB website to find out what they are. But two of the most invasive are Mega Purple, a 2,000 to 1 concentrate from lesser red grapes that adds texture, body, and color, and Velcron a chemical that kills everything in the wine in order to eliminate bretomyces, or bret. And you can add these to your wine. These, these are legal. I know people use Omega Purple. Omega Purple is just one name of the, of the ingredients. Uh, purple 8000 is one that I'm familiar with. Uh, and... Then it goes on and tells about invasive industrial winemaking process and wine ingredients that are used at Ridge Vineyards, hand harvest, organically grown grapes, indigenous yeast, naturally occurring malolactic bacteria, oak from barrel aging, minimum effective SO2, calcium carbonate, water, egg whites, which is a fining agent, and tartaric acid. So, uh, I uh, I don't know. Yay, European Union, I'd like to see before I start getting on the bandwagon for the United States to do it. I'd like to see how it goes over in the European Union. And, and you know, maybe a label like Ridge Winery or a, a QR code to link up to something like that might be the way to do it. And people, maybe, maybe, People will start understanding that wine isn't full of bad stuff. It's just stuff that you need to make a good wine. And it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to kill you. And it's not sulfites are going to hurt you. That's just just too bad that uh, people are, are stuck on that sulfite right there. Okay. Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, paper shortage. There's shortages on everything out there. You know that. Everybody knows that. The supply chain is just crazy. And things aren't getting to where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. And things aren't being done because there's a shortage of workers. And things aren't being taken care of because we have shortages in every aspect of it. Uh, the Container vessels. There, what is it? Last I heard, there was what, what, close to 50 container ships setting out in the harbor waiting to get into San Diego and Los Angeles uh, so they can be unloaded. Uh, the East Coast is saying, send them here, send them here. We can unload you now instead of sitting out there. But then that would require a trip through the Panama Canal, which can get very expensive, and then back up over to the East Coast. And the uh, trucks, the trucking lines and all that, we're, we're short on truck drivers. The country needs truck drivers. Uh, uh, just a tremendous amount of truck drivers are short right now. Any of you out there who know anyone who wants a job, they're over-the-road truck drivers is hiring. They'll train you. They'll do everything that they can to get you 
behind the wheel of a big rig. And there is all sorts of stuff. There's shortage on papers. Uh, uh, just, it's unbelievable. One of the things that's affecting us is the paper that they use for labels on wines. There's a shortage, and when they do get papers, it's costing more. It's costing a lot more to uh, get labels made. And so they're scrambling and trying to do what they can. There's printing places in Napa that specializes in special labels for all the Napa wineries, and they're not able to get the paper in, and, you know, the freight, labor, inflation, all these things are causing prices to go up, which is going to ultimately, if it keeps on, affect you and me because we're going to try to buy wine and it's going to cost more. And we're saying, wait a minute, this wine is the same as I bought last year. And now it's costing me 10, 15% more. And one of those reasons is the things that you don't think about bottles and capsules and corks and labels. And these are all costs that's going to pop in on every bottle of wine that you get that really nothing can be done about. They're, they're, those costs are there and that's what it's going to go. Uh, that's what it's going to cost you more. And the paper shortage is a big factor right now and not being able to ship bottles around the country. There's a bottle shortage too in France and it's it just the COVID-19 is really causing havoc on the wine industry and it's not well yeah it is it's because a lot of workers have not been able to continue on because of it but this all the shortages and everything if you have noticed the shelves at your local grocery store then you will notice that a lot of things aren't there as conveniently as it was just the price of wood pulp has risen from seven hundred to seven seven hundred to seven hundred fifty dollars per metric ton. That was the uh, cost of uh, cost of wood pulp, which they make labels on that. It is now up to twelve hundred dollars per metric ton, and, and that's just raised up in the last year alone uh, over five hundred dollars uh, per metric ton. And that's not including other additives uh, or other things that you need when you do labels, the ink costs and things like that. So prices of your bottle will be affected because of that stuff. Uh, it's uh, the wineries will try to eat as much as they can, but they're not going to be able to because there's such a low supply on bottles that whenever they find bottles out there, they're going to have to buy them regardless of how much they cost to get their wines in the bottles and to put the labels on it and all that. So it is a unbelievable mushroom effect of what's happening with uh, the shipping and everything on the uh, after the COVID here. Another thing, Boda Box. B-O-T-A, Boda Box Wine. I don't know if you've seen it. It is pretty popular, actually. Uh, Delicato Family Wines uh, has been making Boda Box. And they were part of the fastest growing top 20 wine brand in the world. And because of that, they were named the Wine Brand of the Year by Market Watch, Boda Box. Uh, it's uh, fourth generation uh, Delicato family wines, and they've uh, had a winner with this Buddha box. It was launched more than a decade ago as the first nationally distributed premium wine in a box, and has maintained its growth even as the wine has passed 11 million case mark in sales in 2020. 11 million cases of 3-liter Boda Box. Wow. It's the number one brand in both sales and growth. 
in the premium three liter category. And it says high quality and it's trusted by consumers and people look for it. And it's uh, actually my wife loves it. And every once in a while, uh, I will have some and it's, it's really okay. It's, I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, Botavox is uh, uh, made by Delicato family. They have a lot of big names out there that they make, a lot of big name wines. Uh, check them out and find out. But the Botavox has scored the label of wine brand of the year. So that's that's pretty cool for them. And uh, don't turn your nose up at box wine because <laughs> they're being recognized. Same thing with wine in a can; it's being recognized. Um, oh, here another article on when will the alcohol packaging shortage end? I just I just talked to you about the the bottling shortage and uh, what's going on with that. They're saying. Uh, there's also other people getting into other businesses using glass and all that, and wine businesses switching over to some canned wines and box wines and stuff to try to alleviate their issue with not being able to get glass. And when they do find it, it's costing a lot. Uh, glass is expensive anyway to ship. I used to be one of my biggest calls when I made wine is to try to get glass in. So that uh, that has been alleviated out of my worries now, but it's still out there. Still got a problem with that. So let's see. What else am I going to – oh, I know. Next week. Next week we're going to talk about the Supreme Court. Well – Remember I told you that a response, a suit was filed in this, on uh, September the 10th. It was a suit against Sarasota, a supplier in Sarasota, Florida, wanted to ship wine to Missouri. And Missouri said, you can't do it. It's you, it, it's against our laws. And so Sarasota said, we're taking it to the Supreme Court. Well, the Supreme Court just yesterday, I believe it was, yeah, yes, sir, today, said, I'm sorry, we're not going to hear that case. And it's not because, you know, only about... What, where did I read? Something like 5%, uh, if that many, 5%. Oh, here we go. 2.8% of uh, petitions are granted to hear before the Supreme Court. 2.8%. So when you get something. But this is going to be pretty important. They said that uh, you they can't ignore it. But I will uh, tell you more about that next week because it's already eight minutes after – or six minutes after eight – Eastern time now, mm -hmm. and uh, I need to go eat dinner. So, oh, wow. And I didn't get disconnected today, so that's, a, that's an extra treat here. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> oh. It's after 8 o'clock. I'm normally disconnected oh, yeah. here. And you stayed on. Last week, you were disconnected. So, yeah, here we are. What a great show. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> hit or miss. It happens. Yep. Um, now, where are we sitting? I don't know where the. I don't want to close all these out because I want these. Uh, inbox? Okay. And then from the inbox, uh, I want. I don't know where, where the. Uh, I know. I have it here because I'm talking to you, but I don't know where the switchboard is, where I've got it now. Uh, let me punch that there. Let me go to this here. And it should, there we go. There's the switchboard. Okay. Uh, hmm. So, 
we are done for this week. Okay. We will be back next week, which is going to be what the twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Um, all righty. We'll... Oh, and I contacted. I got an email in to Joy Neighbors. Oh. And wait to hear back from her to join us on the twenty eighth. So yeah, absolutely. Once I hear back from her, I'll let you know so you can mm-hmm. put and let people know because mm-hmm. Joy's always uh, uh, just a joy to be on the show. Mm-hmm. And pun intended. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, hope, no. hope hope she can come back again and uh, share some of uh, her good stories and uh, see what what's up yeah. new with her as well. Um, so yeah, I hope so. <clears throat> hope so. We'll let y'all know. But I uh, should be hearing from her. So. Next uh, so. next Thursday, seven p.m. Eastern time is the start. If you can join us live, that would be great. If not, always uh, archives are good on iTunes or. Uh, blog talk radio facebook uh, page all that good stuff uh thank you all for tuning in and we will go ahead and close the show out and um, have a great weekend enjoy the cold front if you're in the south southeast and uh bundle up <laughs> it's gonna be in the 60s yeah bundle yeah. up if, <laughs> if you're in the southeast yeah have if a great... you're down here in florida get out to your parka and long underwear yep. <laughs> for one day anyway you know Oh, is it that it? Is that it? But, oh my gosh! To make it a big deal out of it's not, you know, it, I, one day, two days. But you know, I mean, this is early season. I, we yeah. we've still got December, January, and February to go through. Those are our <laughs> cold months. So, <laughs> it's like two weeks. In I mean, February. It's very good. <laughs> Accumulated too. It's not. It's not all at one yeah. time. Our winter is like uh, one day here and there. Oh, we'll wait a couple of weeks and get back it, in the nineties. Yeah. Uh, another day of cool weather. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But it does. It does. It adds. It adds up, though. Yeah, we get. Does. We get about a month of cold weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. spread out. But yeah. <laughs> but, sure. uh, all right. Yeah, we'll spread take, out. But it's about, we'll a, it. about a month. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we'll, we'll, we'll see you all next Thursday. <laughs> Have a great week, and uh, thanks uh, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you. This concludes tonight's broadcast of All About Wine with your host, Ron. For show information, links to All About Wine on Twitter and Facebook, or to be a guest on this show, visit the show website at www.allaboutwinebtr.com. Archived shows are available for download on iTunes or on our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash allaboutwine. Thank you for listening. Drink Drink responsibly, responsibly, and we'll see you next time on All About Wine. All About Wine. Yeah, I don't know this one.